let's explain the sixteen way sixteen dollar an hour wage a given proportion or number of components in a car have to be made with at least sixteen dollar an hour wage the idea was this sort of eliminates mexico because nobody pays that kind of a wage there right and essentially uh, that, it's not strictly the sixteen dollar an hour ten percent of that value can come from high wage r and d people mm -hmm. so if uh... Ford or GM or a Tier 1 puts a plant and a facility with $100,000 a year engineers down there, some of that can count into the $16. Well, and a, there's a 5% yeah. credit for where you manufacture as well. Yeah. So if of that 40 or 45%, 15% can be met with credits. Yeah. I'd like to make one point on that, though. The requirement for the $16 wage is on the OEM. It's not on the supplier. There's an expectation that Mexican firms are not dynamic, that they're static. Mm -hmm. That's simply not the case. They too can adapt to the high, the sort of what I call high technology conditions mm -hmm. and standards of global production, which then causes the cost of this to go down, right? Creating lateral pressures for glass makers or other, other producers here in the United States. It's completely wrong. Why do you say wrong. that, Joe? All right. So, Let's say you're a producer, you produce class, right? Mm -hmm. And you feed into both the auto and the U.S. housing supply chains. All right. You've got a factory, one that's very modern and up-to-date, where it's all done basically by machines, and another that's sort of out of date with a lot of people, right? All right, you're thinking, okay, how am I going to continue to export in the United States? Well, what you do is you get rid of the workers, right? You create a second factory that's completely automated. Right? This idea that that $16 an hour wage floor was going to protect jobs was always uh, a misnomer. Right? Mm -hmm. That was always made as a PR stunt made for U.S. public consumption. It's not going to help. As a matter of fact, it only takes about a year or two to get those factories up and running. And we've already had one year of delay because of political considerations inside Washington. So whatever benefits that were out there for U.S. domestic consumption, based on what's essentially protectionism, are slowly beginning to narrow. Mm -hmm.